Elvira Lind is the writer and director behind the short film The Letter Room, which was just nominated at the Oscars for Best Live Action Short. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby. Um, and to start, I feel like with the short contenders, there are kind of these added stakes to being nominated at the Oscars because it, it means so many more people will see your movie. Um, can you take us back to just the day of Oscar nomination morning and what that was like for you and your team? Yeah, yeah, it was a it was a crazy morning, <laughs> as I'm sure you can imagine. It's very early. I don't know why they announced it so early. I can't imagine being in LA and have to be up at like five eighteen or whatever time it is. Um, yeah, we were very nervous. I didn't want to watch it. I was like, I don't feel like that's something that I want to put my body through the stress of that. But it was like you should. And my husband, who plays in the film. He was like, we're gonna watch it together. So you, we, you know, it's gonna be on the TV and then everyone else is watching it. Like producer called me and she was on FaceTime. And um, so it was, you know, nerve wracking moment, but really fun when they said the letter room, that was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, for those who don't know this this movie, it's set in a prison and we follow a corrections officer played by Oscar Isaac, your husband, who is um, transferred to the letter room and he's basically tasked with scanning the letters that come in and out and he becomes very invested in the relationships that go back and forth. Um, and we've certainly seen a lot of prison stories on film and TV, but not many are quite as just simple and understated as this. Um, so why did you end up taking this approach to the story? You know, I, I find that so much of the story of what is so awful about being in a prison that we, I feel is sometimes a bit underrepresented in films that are usually just focused on the suspense. It almost seems like there's a lot going on every day. I mean, the, the, the reality is that it's just endless routines. It's, you know, incredibly boring a lot of the time and and stagnant and monotonous and just sad and gray and just your life is just passing by with you know while you just sit there and wait mm -hmm. for your one hour of outdoor time that's also in another box with more bars so i thought that part of it was really important uh to try and portray that and then also the the routines and the jobs that are part of that world. And we actually, it's something that we filmed, typical, I wanna talk about what's not in the film, but <laughs> something that we filmed that I, I um, that we didn't end up using, but it's still something um, that I find is like an undertone in the film is this uh, jobs that goes on the prison that, that people that, that live there um, have to do. Um, or people that work there have to do, which is like cleaning uh, machines that cleans, um, they're cleaning machines that clean things because it's so industrial, like this whole idea of like how we cook a meal for ourselves. We see Richard, the, the lead character, he's cooking himself a meal and that like sensual experience of what it is makes us feel like a human being. We cook something, we can smell something, we can make our own decisions of how much salt and what do we want to eat? And then versus, a prison we see people eat very very sad meals and i would like filming um people cleaning the um dishwasher for instance you know these giant industrial dishwashers or like giant um uh cookers you know when you cook the food but it's just like they're so big it doesn't even look like it should belong in the kitchen like this kind of the feeling of that it it's robbed of the feels like the, the the feeling of home or the feeling that could make us feel like we're in you know, an adult <laughs> that can make decisions for ourselves. And the same with the letter room, something that we take for granted, our privacy, our ability to be connected with our family members. Um, certainly there is this person that is censoring your relationship and what you can receive. And I just thought, yeah, it's a good way to maybe talk about the prison system in a different way. And especially in a short film, you can't do it all. So yeah. it became more about the boredom, the longing and the sadness. Yeah, was there a big research process for you as far as reflecting like the realities of prison and just specifically how someone in the letter room would, would do their job? I mean, it was exciting to see the letter rooms for the first time. I had read about it a while ago and I was just really fascinated. 
I mean, I've always been very fascinated and horrified by the American prison system and these long sentences and how people that are incarcerated are treated and death penalty, of course, is a really big uh, thing that, I, that I'm very against. Um, and I had read a lot about how the daily life and the routines and all these things, like how it was, especially in the maximum security prisons, you know, I wanted to shoot in a live, like in an active security prison. And that was very difficult. <laughs> That's good, really. Um, but we went and, and researched and visited people. We spoke to a lot of people both on both sides um, that worked there or lived there. And we got to see letter rooms. And apparently it's, it's the job that no one wants. No one wants to work in a letter room, apparently. So I, I can understand why. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, Oscar not only stars in the film, but he is also an executive producer. And this, I believe, is your first film that you guys made with your production company, Mad yeah. Gene. Um, I had a few questions about just his involvement. First off, yeah. just how involved was he behind the scenes as far as forming his character and also just that fantastic mustache he has? <laughs> I mean, he forced me to be in this movie no it's not true um <laughs> i asked him if he wanted to read the script he read it and he was he he said yes to do it um which was uh, wonderful and um then we just started collaborating on it i mean i've been talking he was the one that heard the story ages ago i've been building the story in my mind for a really long time and we talk about it many times and he was actually the one that that um said what about that story with the the man and the in the letter room and the the girl and that he remembered it so he he asked me if i would consider to do that and my producer sophia who produced the film um she has been trying to make me do fiction for a long time and i had just found out i was pregnant with our second child and i was like oh, how am i going to even how am i going to do this at film before i have two small kids and i do documentaries normally so it just kind of um felt like it was a good story to take on because it was somewhat con contained, like you could potentially do it in the amount of time that we had. And we had just started our production company. So it felt like that was a good first thing to do and we could work on it together. And, and um, it's, I mean, it's so fun. We work a lot on each other's things. We spend so much time at home looking at scripts together and, and, he sees all my edits and he's been, we've been a big part of each other's productions for many, many, many years. So it's been fun to like open a place where we can kind of start creating things for real with like a company name on it. So it's been a, um, yeah, it's a great to have the first thing we make out of this company be nominated for an Academy Award. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, good place to start. <laughs> and this character, Richard, you know, it's, he's, He's yeah. very kind and he, he cares about people's well-being. Um, I'm not sure how much you thought about his backstory, but what do you think it was that brought Richard to this very kind of tough and brutal job that wouldn't normally suit someone like him, I guess? Um, I, I mean, there could be various reasons. I imagine he'd worked there for a really long time and sometimes mm -hmm. you work somewhere and you just kind of, stop thinking about why. Um, and I think he, within the, the framework of a place that's so rough, um, and I, I, you know, it's rough, but it's also, it becomes routine for whoever works there and, you know, they just go on with their life. And, and I think he sort of started to make this idea in his mind that he could, he could force some, some humanity into this place or he could make a difference, but he just kind of didn't really figure out how. So as the years go by, he's like getting more and more um, unresolved and it creates this um, slight desperation or frustration or just like unsettling feeling that he has. And sort of, he needs to be, make, he needs to make a difference or be important. I mean, I think that's a really, just like a, a human need that we need to feel like we're here for a reason and we're doing something for someone. And, and there's a longing to to feel that be uh, fulfilled or like we want to we want to see ourselves um, do something meaningful 
And if we don't, it just starts to, yeah, why are we even, what are we even doing, you know? And we start to, the demons that we have inside, they might come up in different ways that we wouldn't want. Like, have we develop an eating disorder, like he has a little bit of one and, um, you know, uh, he looks at porn, but he's kind of depressed about it. Like, it's just like, nothing is really exciting. All the things that could be something that we would enjoy is like, you know, he doesn't really know how to connect to anything. What was the question? Sorry, we got <laughs> No, just about kind of what brought him to the job, but that's, yeah, yes, you're good. <laughs> and also, I met, and it's funny because Oscar was like, I don't know if there really, if this guy really exists in a place like that. And I was like, no, there, there will be someone like this. Yeah. yeah, there must be. I just was so certain that this person mm -hmm. exists somewhere. And I actually met someone. We were, we were scouting, and we. I walked around with a guy for a day, and he had this energy. I just and I really tried to get Oscar and him to get together because I really wanted him to spend the day with him. Um, and in the end, it didn't end up working out. But I very um, passionately described this person because he was just like he really believed in the good of his job. He really thought he made a difference. He thought he was also helping people that um, some were lost and were, would maybe just be living in the street and here they at least, he at least would help them have a home. He was, you know, he, he had found a way to make this a good job uh, also in a sort of emotional level, like and how he could do something good for people. It, it felt, you know, it, it was like a, yeah, a little bit abstract, I wanted to say, I wanna say, but and maybe that's not the right word for this exactly, but maybe it's a bit rude. Um, because I'm sure that he was actually providing something really calm and like he did have, his energy was just really beautiful. And he was like, I never feel threatened because I just, I never meet anyone with violence and I, I would find a way to like talk a person out of a situation. And he just, you could sense that. So because he had such a calm vibe, it was felt really safe to walk around with him, even though, you know, we were just there and, around all these other people and it, you know you could be scared but I, he had yeah this energy and it was quite inspiring to see this kind of person in this kind of environment so I was like no there could be there could be a Richard out there yeah um and I'm also just wondering how much you put yourself in the shoes of Richard and thought about how you might get invested in people's lives if you were in the letter room yourself or if you think you might be a little more detached oh no I you know I'm a documentary filmmaker we get so involved and like that's I what I thought that's <laughs> the story so I clearly you know yeah I would imagine how easy it could be to sort of get absorbed, especially if you're very lonely and you, I mean, for him, I think he imagines what it would feel like if that letter was for him. And I think also Oscar took it a little bit to a little more extreme. And like when he started sucking on that lollipop and I was like, oh my God, like he just added things that made him a little less um, um, appealing as a human being, which was very funny. Um, and, he made him a very faceted person. I really, I, I, I think he did such a phenomenal job with that. He really played around with some of those things. Um, but yeah, I imagine. I mean, don't you think you would a little bit? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, <laughs> like you said, you have primarily worked in the field of documentaries before this, yeah. and this is kind of your first narrative short. Totally, um, yeah. What was it that inspired you to just go into this new territory? in general? Like I said before, with the pregnancy, it was a little bit of a, um, maybe a slightly like desperate situation. Like how am I gonna make something really fast in a documentary for me? Cause I make these right. very slow verite style docs. I knew it would take a really long time. So it was a tri time crunch question, to be honest, that it was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just try this fiction thing to see if I can make it in, you know, do a short fiction project in a short amount of time. And now, you know, I'm so in love with doing it. It's been so amazing. Yeah, I was so, gonna ask how much you wanted to keep going in that direction moving forward now. I imagine a, a whole bunch. Yeah, I really like it. I'm already working on other things and it's, it's, it's great because I've always loved writing stories, been doing that since I was, since I started writing and before I could write, I would just make them up and tell them. And so um, it's a huge passion of mine. I worked on a lot of other 
directors fiction films with them and like help them create things and and so it's yeah it really fits with me this like writing and coming up i mean it's kind of incredible because in dark you're very reliant on the truth and the you know the facts of the world that you're documenting and what they want your characters want to do you can't you know add things that you feel like adding because you have to wait for them to make decisions that may or may not go in the direction that you would like and here you just make stuff up and it's just fun like that's amazing <laughs> just create worlds so yeah yeah I'm, I'm quite hooked on that yeah well um a lot of times with short films especially ones that get nominated for oscars um there's a discussion of how it would work as like a feature length film and we've yeah. seen adaptations like i think skin from a few years ago which won yeah. the live action short category eventually became a feature is this a story that yeah. you think could lend itself to being a feature length or do you think this just works best kind of as is um i think it could definitely work as a feature i think it was always way longer in my mind um it has all these different uh side stories i think it's it's more maybe in the comedic side perhaps than what it is as a short i imagine some of the scenes are more comedic um and i imagine the the trip that he'll be on as he's kind of discovering what it what how it feels does it maybe this like the man that starts to answer people's questions in life with with uh, pretend letters um so there's a lot of possibilities that yeah i can imagine that that would be really fun to continue to write on for sure i think yeah. it could but you know who knows <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much, Alvira, and congrats again on your nomination. Thanks, um, and for those of you watching, hit like and subscribe for more interviews and head to goldderby.com to make your Oscar predictions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.